EPA and WA meteorologist Bobby Martin here with your outlook for September 12th, 2023. And hey, we got uh, sun behind me here for a change. It's been a wet go at it for the last couple of days. And uh, it's been actually since Thursday where we had some very wet weather and very unsettled weather. Not expecting that today, at least not during the day. We're going to have a nice day today with a mix of sun and clouds. Still going to be warm, still going to be humid. Temperatures in the 80s for most of us today. 79 to 85, as you see above me, is the temperature spread and uh, tomorrow we go back into the 70s because we're going to have a lot more clouds to contend with and uh, a cold front moving through. This cold front you can see that today that's actually associated with low pressure that's off to the north here, but the cold front's back here like this. That is going to be moving through overnight tonight and Wednesday morning, and then some places further east, will it'll linger into the afternoon. I don't think it's going to be an all-day, entire day thing here on Wednesday, but we will start off with showers in the morning and the opportunity for, at least in eastern areas, some scattered thunderstorms as this moves forward. And I'm going to do that here and show you the overnight period here. This is Tuesday night. It's going to be mainly after midnight. I'll give you timing here in a second. It goes into Tuesday morning, or excuse me, Wednesday morning, and then you have some scattered showers and thunderstorms in our eastern area. Uh, eastern areas that will linger into the afternoon. So here is the NAM High Res Future Simulated Radar. Starting us off at midnight, because there's nothing prior to this, and I can even back it up and show you. There it is. Nothing nothing prior to midnight. And once we get into past midnight, we have these showers uh, moving through the region. There's just going to be showers late in the overnight period going into Wednesday morning. And uh, mostly just showers uh, on Wednesday morning as well. Once we get into the afternoon, these areas here and eastward have the opportunity for some thunderstorms out in central pennsylvania will be cutting off at that point uh, so you won't have to worry about that at all as far as thunderstorms are concerned but it's not going to be severe anything severe here on wednesday we're not dealing with that it doesn't look like it just garden variety storms and that's going to be mainly across very far eastern pennsylvania and new jersey before this lifts out uh, but going back to where noon is uh, you can see this may linger in the early afternoon in far eastern pennsylvania by two o'clock or three o'clock it's already done there so uh, same thing down here by Philadelphia. It should be ending right around mid-afternoon. So uh, Philly's game in South Philadelphia is at 640 each of the next two days. Obviously, Tuesday, today is not an issue. We go into Wednesday. I don't think it's going to be an issue either. Uh, maybe some pregame stuff interrupted there. But that should be out of here uh, by this evening, uh, or Wednesday evening, I should say, uh, once this moves off the shore and uh, offshore, and then that's going to lead to much cooler temperatures coming in here for Thursday. And along with cooler comes low humidity, which is great. Everybody loves low humidity. Uh, once we get to Thursday, we're looking at temperatures in the uh, lower 70s across the region. Uh, 70 to 75 degree rain stuff for both Thursday and Friday. Mostly sunny skies both days and just fantastic weather. And yes, you do see Hurricane Lee creeping into the picture down here. Uh, this will be a player this weekend but not in the way you think okay so there's going to be some localized impacts to our area yes our area there will be some impacts to this not directly though and not even really so much indirectly in terms of rain but everything else uh there is some other opportunities for some other things to occur with this again mostly sunny thursday friday big high pressure sitting here over the northeast united states and great lakes as this continues up the coast. Now, these, if you see this here, this is not this is very far off the coast here. So you're probably wondering, what do you mean you're going to get impacts from this? What are you talking about? It is going to retrograde to the northwest, I think, once it gets up to a latitude equal to where uh, our region is. But it's going to be doing so toward Cape Cod, the Gulf of Maine, that kind of thing. Doesn't mean it's going to hit there either. But this is going to be a very large, very large storm. Even though it's not raining this far out, you're going to have a fetch around this where the wind field has expanded quite a bit now at this point where it's here uh and actually i'll move this forward just a couple frames here just a little bit closer okay so that's the closest it gets it doesn't quite get to cape cod and again it doesn't need to there will be some outer bands getting to there uh there will be some very strong winds there because you're close enough to the center of the circulation where it could provide that now in our area starting on thursday already later thursday and thursday night especially we're going to start getting a fetch off the, the the hurricane's winds are going like this around the, this direction like this that's spinning around in that counterclockwise direction like most or any low pressure does in northern hemisphere right so you're going to get uh with a very strong hurricane here there's still going to be a category two at least coming up at this latitude you're going to have it is going to decrease as time goes on but at this point when it's down here it's a category two so you have about 100 mile an hour winds or they're about maybe a little bit more than that and that's pushing these waves all the way into the coast so you have a couple things going on here 
uh, along our shore points. That's New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland. You're going to have uh, increased surf, a coastal flooding issue, okay? So you're going to have some, under normally dry ground, you're going to have the water rise a little bit just because all that water is being pushed, uh, even though it's hundred, hundreds of miles away, probably 300 miles away, if not more. Uh, it's going to be pushing all that water uh, toward the coast because that's the way the wind direction is coming off of this hurricane. You're also going to have wave heights increase that are going to be 7 to 10 feet, and then eventually you're going to get like 8 to 12 feet once we get to Friday. So it's going to be pretty pretty high waves. And if it's something you want to just uh, go there and just observe as an ooh and ah thing here at the shore points, you're not going to be able to go in the water. Rip currents are going to be ridiculous, and they won't let you in anyway. And if you do, you're, you're, you're not very smart. Okay, but if you want to go there and see the waves and see what it looks like, uh, they're going to be especially high this weekend. Obviously, 8 to 12 feet is not normal. Normal is normally like, uh, you know, two to three, two to four feet, okay, at the shore points. So this is a lot higher than normal, uh, and you're going to be dealing with that as well. Coastal flooding, though, is going to be an issue where that surge is pushing the, uh, on normally high, on normally dry ground is going to be elevating, elevating the water rise a little bit, right? Not a lot, but maybe a foot or two, but that's enough that's going to flood some side streets right along the immediate shore points here in New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland. So those are really the three main things, okay? I don't think we're dealing with any wind from this. I don't think we're dealing with uh, any rain, certainly, uh, but we will have those impacts. And we are actually going to see on Saturday, if you look at our local forecast, mostly Sunday, Thursday, and Friday. Saturday, we have partly cloudy skies because when this is up here on Saturday, which is right here, and it's retrograding, you're going to have a massive cloud field around this. It's going to be pushing this way, okay? So you're going to have... Uh, we're, we're calling it intervals of clouds and sun because you're going to have times that you have sun at least part of the day, but you're going to have some clouds moving in, at least high clouds associated with this hurricane uh, with the outer bands of the clouds, the cirrus clouds that are with it, okay? So it's not going to be outer bands of rain, but uh, we will have some cloud cover um, a little bit, especially in our eastern points. The easternmost points of our coverage area will have more in the way of cloud cover with this. So we're not uh, completely... Uh, out of the woods with this, because especially at our shore points, we're going to have the uh, some impacts from that. But as far as a direct impact, that is off the table for our area. And it's just a matter of where it goes up here. Is it going to hit the Gulf of Maine? Is it going to hit Nova Scotia? Is it going to hit Cape Cod? Cape Cod's probably a low chance to do that, but it doesn't need to. If it's this close to Cape Cod, you're still going to have a Category 1 hurricane or pretty close to it, a very strong tropical storm. So you're going to have tropical storm force winds going all the way inland. Uh, and they're going to feel the effects of that up there with some, it's basically be the equivalent to them of a strong nor'easter in wintertime, okay? So it's not going to be much different because this does eventually become post-tropical. And the reason for that, and this is the National Hurricane Center forecast going out several days. Uh, if you look at the uh, forecast advisory, if you actually click on the, and they see it, people ignore this all the time because it's just telling you what the intensity is going to going to be at different points and people would rather just look at fancy graphics but you've actually delve into this and look at what it says 34 knots is the start of tropical storm force winds this right here represents how far to the west and northwest of that center that the tropical storm force winds extend outward from the center so it doesn't matter where the center is okay 200 nautical and these are nautical miles this is not miles uh, nautical miles is 200 times 1.15 okay or approximately that so you figure 230 miles away from the center of circulation, there will be tropical storm force winds extending outward from that. And in other quadrants, these are all different quadrants, northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. These are all different quadrants to show you how far those winds extend. 34 knots is the beginning of a tropical storm force wind, okay? So that's a gale force wind. And uh, that is important because when the track looks like this, it could be out here. Uh, all the way out here and well off the coast, but you're going to have some effects. You know, you go 200 miles off of this. Uh, if it gets up to uh, a point like that, that's that's right about here, like the European model just showed, you're going to have winds that are tropical storm force that are going to go around this, like the, in this whole area like this. It's going to be a huge area. So even inland, they're going to have some effects. I just don't think it gets to the Jersey Shore, but we'll continue to monitor here in the next couple of days. And we're even further... Uh, Confident of that with uh, with the uh, ensemble tracks that we've been showing the last couple of days. There's the tracks. There are some western mo western leading members here, but about 40% of them are leaning west toward the Gulf of Maine or, or Cape Cod in that general area. Most of them, 60% of them, are going toward the center or just to the right of it, toward Nova Scotia, 
or in between Maine and Nova Scotia, somewhere in that area. So that is where the landfall point is. It's going to be a very, a very strong tropical storm, post-tropical, once it gets up here uh, onto the cooler waters. But, uh, you know, that's going to be something that they're going to have to deal with in uh, New England or southeastern Canada, or probably both, actually. Uh, but for our area, those localized impacts will still be in play. And uh, once we get into next week beyond this, it looks like we're going to be dry through this entire weekend. Intervals of clouds and sun Saturday, of course, like I said, with as high clouds at very least wrapping around that hurricane, but no precipitation. Sunday's back to mostly sunny. And then Monday, we are back to a mix of clouds and sun. There will be a cold front coming through here uh, at some point Sunday night, which is hard to see, but it's right there. There's lacking moisture. Here's the... Um, here's the front itself it's like this it's a reinforcing front coming through overnight but there's no precipitation with that as of now so we're keeping it dry sunday night and monday with temperatures in the middle 70s by next monday i'm epa wa meteorologist bobby marchers that is your outlook for september 12 2023 have a great tuesday